Okay, in this session, we're going to go over the course, go over what we're going to cover in the course, and we're also going to look at Python relative to other tools that you may be using, particularly Excel and other programming languages. So in module zero of the course, we're going to basically start interacting with Python. We're going to learn how to interact with Python in Colab notebooks. We're going to define simple functions. Uh, and then a really big thing that we're going to do in, in module zero is we're going to look at how to use packages that other people have created. That's going to be a theme going through this course that there's a lot out there that other people have uh, created. So uh, we don't, we can use what the code that they've written to, to optimize portfolios, to calculate, um, to, to slice and dice data frames and, and answer questions that we may want. So, so the idea here is the last session in module zero, we're going to look at uh, how to find what other people have done and how to, how to uh, import that. In module one, we're going to look at typical financial analyst type tasks that are done on spreadsheet-like data. So, for example, in module one, we're going to look at uh, aspects of the uh, Paycheck Protection Program, answer questions like, okay, what state had the, um, had, uh, the most uh, PPP loans? Uh, we're also going to, to look at answer questions like you may be confronted with as a financial analyst. Uh, we'll, we'll pull in some spreadsheet type data and look at, okay, is, is institutional ownership, uh, does that increase management uh, effectiveness? So the theme of this module is that uh, we're looking at data, uh, spreadsheet type data. So what we're doing is we're taking tasks that you may presently be doing in Excel or you may you would be doing in Excel and we're going to show how to do that in Python and why it's uh, more efficient, better, quicker to do it in Python. I have a note here that uh, there's no trading bots, right? So one of the things that I noticed as soon as you start looking at Python and finance all the tutorials or many of them say, okay, well they use Python to create a trading bot. Whereas 99% of people who work in finance don't create trading bots. So we're going to look at really sort of core uh, tasks that you would do as a financial analyst. Um, again, spreadsheet type data. So we're, we're going to take that uh, and, um, and do it in Python. In module two, note, uh, I should mention here, uh, Python being indexed at zero, we have module zero, one, and two. I think I mentioned that. But uh, so, so in uh, module two, what we're going to look at is we're going to start pulling data from that's not in spreadsheet. So this is data made available through application programming interfaces, APIs. So, so this might be, for example, Coinbase has an API where you can pull data and it's in JSON format. So we're going to start pulling maybe trades and, uh, from Coinbase, cryptocurrency trades, uh, things like that. Uh, and then we're going to do more investment type tasks. So these are tasks that in, when we're looking at spreadsheet data, we're uh, this is going to use a, this is something called uh, a library called pandas and, and, and again in module one we're kind of creating pivot tables we are um, slicing and dicing data however in module two we're going to look at more uh, not statistical but we're going to we're going to use we're going to do some regressions we're going to look at uh, for example how how to calculate uh, market depth, how much you can trade without pushing around the price. We'll do some portfolio optimization, um, option valuation, that type of stuff. So we're gonna look at more of the mathematical side of finance, uh, whereas module one is a little bit more of the, the corporate finance uh, side of finance. And then in module three, uh, the last module, that we're gonna look at next steps and, and how to collaborate. So we're gonna look at running Python outside of a Colab notebook, so maybe in VS Code. Uh, we're going to look at Git and GitHub, right? This is important for showing off your work uh, and also collaborating with others. And we're gonna look at uh, dependency management because uh, there's so many packages out there and, and you can use these, you know, you, you'll come to uh, use a lot of them. You can run into dependency problems, so we'll take a brief look at uh, virtual environments and we'll also look at visualization, so Python, again, uh, the visualization is well beyond um, Excel, so we're going to start looking at, you know, how what uh, visualization libraries do we have available from within Python. So in next session, right, our primary uh, learning tool will be the Colab Notebook. So we'll go through this presentation, but uh, uh, next um, session we're going to start jumping into to uh, the Colab Notebooks.
And I'll just reiterate here that it's really important. Python is an interactive language, so it's really important that you're running the Colab notebooks along with me. Uh, you'll learn much quicker if you're actually testing things out and, and, and running them within your own Colab notebook next session. A brief note, in this course, we're, we will everything we'll talk about is Python 3. There is Python 2 out there, and I mention this because if you start looking on Stack Overflow and you type a question how to do this in Python, you might get Python 2 solutions, right? You shouldn't use Python 2. There's no reason to use Python 2. You'll use Python 3, and Python 2 and 3 are not necessarily compatible. You can't just type in Python 2 code and have it work in a Python 3 interpreter. So just, as a, uh, just to mention, uh, we're going to use Python 3. Any sort of solution you look at should be Python 3, uh, and Python 2 is not, not completely compatible. Good. So the big thing here, uh, what, what, uh, what all my students, uh, usually they're working in Excel. And the biggest hurdle to, 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 to working in Python is students will say, okay, well, you know, um, I, you know I'm not a programmer. I, I, I can use Excel, but I... I, I uh, um, but Python, you know, programming, you know, is just, it's not me. Or you know, they, they kind of assume right off the bat that they can't do it. So what I want to do here is talk about the similarities uh, between Python and Excel. They're actually very similar. So if you can use Excel, you can absolutely uh, use Python. We just need to take note of the similarities and kind of where things are different, right? Uh, but uh, so this is kind of... What I want to talk about here is ready to... is a sort of a bridge from Excel into Python. So in Python, we give values names and we operate on the names. Excel is the exact same way, except that in Excel, we, give, uh, uh, we put the value in a cell and then we reference cells. So if you switch, you know, uh, if you think of instead of a cell, just have it give it a name, right? Then that's, it's an easy transition from Excel into Python. Operators are also overloaded in, in, in both. Now, you may not have known that term in, in Excel, but operators are overloaded in Excel. They just don't mention it. So what, what do we mean by overloaded? So this means an operator kind of looks at the type that it's operating on and does different things depending on what it's operating on. So both Excel and Python, if you, if you were to do something like this, um, type in into an Excel cell equal FIN plus ANCE, it'll return finance. Right. And uh, it'll do the same exact thing in Python. So both in Excel and Python deal with this in the exact same way. And in both Excel and Python, if you type into a, a cell in um, uh, Excel, 3 plus 2 will return 5. And if you, if you type 3 plus 2 into a, a Python interpreter, uh, it'll return 5. So both Excel and Python deal with the plus operator in the same way. If you feed it two strings, it'll concatenate the strings. If you feed it two numbers, it'll add the two numbers. Um, so when you're, you know, so this, this, this is convenient. It's easy to work with. And when you move from Excel to Python, you don't lose this, right? The only difference is um, three might be stored uh, in, a, in a value, or we might just type three plus two in the interpreter. Uh, but the but the the only difference is 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 um, how you may store the variables. Uh, both can and can connect to external data sources. We'll talk uh, quite a bit more about that. Uh, there are some differences, right? So we mentioned that in Python, values stored in cells, right? Uh, so Excel is a visual tool, right? Um, you see all the data. You can point and click to where you want it to go. Python isn't a visual tool like this. So the idea here is we can't point and click to, to what we want. We just have to know this, the values. Now, this is the, the fact that Excel is visual, and you can just kind of drag and, drag and select regions of data. This is easy for the beginner, but... Even if you if you're still a beginner, you know moving toward intermediate, this becomes a very big hindrance to you. So most of the time when I'm working with data, I don't want to actually necessarily uh, see it all the time. I might take a look at it and so forth, but I don't necessarily want to see it all the time uh, because um, think about it in terms of reusing uh, reusing spreadsheets, right? Uh, in Excel, you have to always have that region selected. So if I bring in new data, it has to be in that that nice region. Um, if I, you know, if I'm uh, if I'm using somebody else's spreadsheet, I have to make sure that um, 
that when I put my data into it, that uh, that you know all the regions match and so forth. So whereas in Python, I instead of actually selecting a region, I'm just going to give that data a name, and then I say, okay, reference this name. So it's much easier to sort of reuse code than it is to reuse spreadsheets. This is going to be a big implication later. So uh, and then again, you can also think of just examples where. If I'm doing a Monte Carlo and I want 10 million random variables, right? Excel has a tendency to, to print these, whereas Python it just stores these 10 million random variables in a, in a you know, in, in a, under some name, random variables, right? So, so th I mean, this is a difference, but but uh, what I think you'll find over time is it's much nicer to that Python is not a visual tool that that you can just name something and not see it or see it if you want. You'll be able to print it out and see it. Um, so. This goes along to, to what we're saying. Uh, we, we select data by, by its name, not by, not by um, its location, right? And again, locations can change, and that's a big problem. So this is just an example, right? So here uh, we're uh, referencing this A1 should be whatever's in B2 plus 1. Uh, which can be a problem again if, if uh, you have to make sure that when you put in a new value it's in b2 but um, in, in Python we're just going to, to say y is equal to x plus 1. There's a couple other implications here that uh, why it's not it's nice to be able to not see something. Uh, in Excel we have this analog where we might hide uh, rows and, and, and so forth, but what you can think of is Python has nicer mechanisms to hide uh, things from the user. And this is going to be important because, again, there's so much out there in Python. Because it's harder to sh share spreadsheets, you don't s t tend to, s to share spreadsheets so much in Excel, but in Python you're always using other people's code. So the nice thing is people can write uh, extend the Python language and write functionality in there for you, and you don't have to worry about, um, you, you don't have to necessarily see all the variables that they have going on under the hood. Uh, so so this, so this is, uh, it's a big benefit, and it's a lot more formal than just hiding a row or a column, trying to get a spreadsheet from somebody and realizing, oh, they have a variable hidden in a column. Uh, this is, I'm going to talk about it throughout the course, I've already talked about it a lot. Functionality is easier to share as code than by a spreadsheet, right? So code is simply text. So it is, and, and also Python has a formal mechanism with which to share code. Um, has a, a Python, it has a, a sort of a package manager. So sharing code is very natural. Python is built for it, uh, just like other programming languages. Much easier than sharing spreadsheets. Uh, spreadsheets are, are um, difficult to share, they're difficult to trust what other people have done, and then like I say, you get a spreadsheet and then you run into the whole visual tool problem. You have to locate where in the spreadsheet they've put everything. Along with that, Python can be extended by creating new data types and methods. Throughout this course, I'm going to talk about the difference between the user, which is us, and the programmer. See, a lot of students will say, oh, well, I'm not a programmer, and, and nothing in this course is going to say you're a programmer. We're, we're going to use Python. Uh, where you kind of switch from the user to the programmer is when you actually, ex a programmer would extend Python, give it new functionality. So the nice thing is, because there's so many people, so many people in finance that, that uh, program, that, 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 that use Python, that naturally when you're a user, you want to add uh, functionality to it. So, so they'll add this new functionality to it. So to give you an example, we could create, and what has been created, is an order book data type, a data type that will handle uh, an order book so that you could then say, okay, well, this is an order book at some point in time, and you could have a, a method, which is like a function on that, that just says, give me the best bid or the best ask or the most the inside quotes. So, uh, so you can do that with Python where you, where you can't really do that with Excel, right? You can somebody might create a spreadsheet that kind of handles order book data, but, but there's no way to sort of ex extend Excel in a way that you can extend Python, right? Now again, we're not in this course going to extend Python, but we're going to make use of extensions that other people have already done. In Python, it's going to be much easier to automate tasks. Uh, this, is, this is huge. 
now what as I as when I began working as an analyst, you would do things manually in Excel. Now everything is 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 scripted. So if I've done some process once, I just write a script, which means just a a, a set of instructions, an ordered set of instructions, basically. And then it'll automatically do it again. So I really only have to do an analysis once, and then I have a script, and then it I can run it any time. I can have it run automatically and so forth. So it's really easy to automate tasks in Python, whereas it's not so easy in Excel. There are ways to do it in Excel. However, Python is just made for it, uh, whereas Excel is not made for it. You're kind of having Excel do something where it wasn't the main thrust of it, the, the main point of, of the, the software. Uh, Python can handle much larger data sets and, and varied and intensive calculations. So here, there's a lot of things that Python will do that Excel just can't do, right? Just flat out can't. And, and to see this, look no further than what's going on in machine learning and artificial intelligence, right? These are things you just flat out cannot do uh, in, in Excel. I have this as a note here. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of people out there or, or the uh, people who've been around for a very, very long time, maybe like me, will say, well, you know, I can do this in Visual Basic. I can do that in Visual Basic, you know. So I, I, I can cobble this together in Excel. Uh, however, uh, this is where it's really nice to note that Python is, is very widely used, right? Python uh, is maybe the third most used programming languages if, if we're just going by posts on Stack Overflow and so forth, which is, isn't a perfect measure. But, but Python is just one of the most used languages. So any problem that you run into, somebody else has run into and already posted a solution online. Any calculation that you can think of doing, somebody has already created a package and put it online so you, so you can use that same calculation. That is not true with you know, the VB languages, set of languages. Uh, there's a much smaller user base. Uh, and again, you're trying to force Excel into doing something that it's, it's not really what it's for. So uh, I just add this as a note in here. Now I'll run through the rest of these somewhat quicker. Uh, Python relative to R, Python and R are very similar. Uh, much of what you can do in, in which everything that we'll do in Python, you could also do in R. Uh, Python is just maybe a little bit more, well, Python is more general purpose, whereas R is more focused on statistical calculations. Uh, so s there are no distinctions really that will matter for us in this course. I have, I have a note here that R might be better in panel data, but, but Python is better for machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, is uh, true, but again, not a, a important distinction. You could use R just like you're using Python here. In fact, I, 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 I have an R package. I authored an R package to pull data from the Energy Information Administration, right? So much of what I do in Python, I, I can also do in R. Python relative to C, C++, and Java. Now, C, I'm going to talk just, I'll talk about just generally C here. Uh, so what C is, C is a lower level language. So what we mean by high and low level is we mean relative to the metal, the metal being the actual computer. C is lower level, you're closer to the actual metal, you have more control, it's faster, uh, but you have to manage memory. It's much harder to, to write something. So what you can think of is if you're gonna use C or C++, they're really, they're not suited to any sort of task that we would do in a spreadsheet. Right? So these are not well suited. If you did want to create some trading algorithm, you would prototype it in Python, and then if you wanted it to be really fast, then you would do it in like C. But, uh, but these, these, because they're, uh, you're, you're spending so much time managing memory and so forth, these are not appropriate for our task. So, so whereas R, we could use Python or R, we would not use C or C++ for what we're doing here for typical financial analyst type tasks. They're, all, they're, not in, they're not interactive, they're a compiled language. Uh, this is the high versus low level. JavaScript. So this, again, going by Stack Overflow, would be the most widely used language. JavaScript is the language of the interactive web. So the idea of JavaScript is it allows you to, to manipulate uh, you know, um, uh, the, the uh, document object model, the, the HTML, right? So, uh, but we are going to use JavaScript here, but we're going to have uh, Python uh, write the JavaScript for us. So the idea here is um, 
what we're going to do is we're going to do calculations in Python and have them visualized in JavaScript. We don't need to know any JavaScript. We'll not cover any JavaScript, JavaScript here. Uh, however, it's useful to know that now in Python, it's going to call this JavaScript library and visualize something in JavaScript for us. So we will make use of JavaScript. We will not code in JavaScript. But the neat thing for you to know now is Python and JavaScript work well together. Right? I do my calculations in Python. I visualize it in JavaScript. So in summary, why use Python? High level, easy to use, general purpose programming language, widely used. Right? Uh, Python is going to be easier to use for many uh, tasks that we would otherwise use a spreadsheet for. It's easier to share. It's easier to collaborate with others. It's easier to use what others have done. I hit this point a lot, I, I, but, but it, it's extremely important. In Excel, you're going to find, as you use Excel, you're redoing a lot of calculations that other people have already done. However, in Python, you do much less of that, right? If a, somebody has done another written code to do this calculation, I just import their code and do the calculation. That is a really um, nice thing about Python. Similar to R, and, and not similar for our purposes to, to, uh, to lower level compiled languages. So as an exercise, for every session we'll, we'll have an exercise here, we'll just do this together. Uh, what will the following do in Python? Next, in the next session, you're going to have a Python interpreter, so you can just type that into the Python interpreter and see uh, what it's going to do is throw an error. And it's really nice to talk about this right off the bat because a lot of times people, if they see an error, they'll get nervous, right? Don't worry if you see an error. The nice thing about having an interactive language is we can try different stuff and, and generate errors and then uh, see what caused the error, and you learn a lot that way. So getting an error is not a bad thing. And the nice thing about Python is its errors are uh, generally informative. So right here it says type error, error. We can only concatenate string to another string. So what it's saying is it's, it sees a string and a number, and it's going to try to put it to the more general uh, type, which is a string. But it's saying, oh, well, I can't, this, this, is, this, is, um, this is not a string, so I can't do it. Right, uh, so when it sees a string, it's ready. It's it's waiting for another string, and it's saying it's not a string, so I can't concatenate these things together. Uh, so the error tells us right, you know, what the problem is. The solution uh, is we can just say weak and then uh, plus uh, use the plus operator, and now string one. So it converts this one into a string, and now it can concatenate. And it'll say weak one. We could have just put quotes around the one too. So we could have just put quotes around the one. And that'll work just as well, uh, but but that's the and you you're going to do this quite a bit, um, hopefully throughout the course where you try something, you get type error, you say okay, well that's what the problem with that is, and I can just fix it like that and move on. Great. Have a great afternoon.